So I've had a lot of requests for people uh, asking for a brief tutorial on how to vectorize things. So I've decided that uh, I'll uh, do some basic stuff. Um, this is kind of off the cuff and super, uh, super unprofessional, so bear with me. Um, so I'm going to go through picking line art, Ink, Inkscape basics, um, exporting your file, how to clean it up after you're done exporting, and then um, putting the finishing touches on what you're doing. So let's start with picking line art. Um, gunnam has been around for a long time, so I've got a lot of line art to pick from. This is that's what I work in. Um, I've got a request uh, sitting in my queue for a Nobel Gundam, so we'll try that. I haven't started on it yet. Throw it into Google and find an image that works for you. Now it's going to take a few times for you to really know what you're looking for in terms of what you, uh, how you want to vector things. Um, I've been vectorizing photographs lately, which is its own set of challenges. But let's go with that nice original line art there. Um, I have done some preliminary searching. I really can't find anything that's better resolution than this, and that's a bummer. So I'm just going to take that, drop it here into this folder where I'm working out of. And uh, this is Inkscape. This is an open source vector program that I use. Um, everyone says Illustrator is better, but Illustrator isn't free, and this is. Um, and frankly, for my purposes, this is definitely good enough. Um, so it's pretty much as easy as dropping your line art into Inkscape. You're going to want to embed it, not link it. And here we see that you know um, I generally work within this default bounds here. Uh, when I export it, it, it tends to give me a good DPI. Um, so I just resize things to fit that. Uh, I'm mostly going to be working off of keyboard shortcuts, but I will start with working off of this toolbar here. Keyboard shortcuts will save you a lot of time in the long run, but whatever. So this is your basic move and transform uh, tool. Just grab that, put it in the center. Um, hold control while you're doing this to keep your aspect ratio of the image the same. If you don't, you end up with that sexy beast right there, which is not what we're going for. Um, you also notice me zooming in and out a lot. Control, mouse wheel, that gets you zooming in and out. Shift, mouse wheel, that gets you going left and right. Um, really just getting a handle on that makes things a lot more convenient when you're working on one of these uh, for a while. So I'm just going to get that scaled up about where we want it. Close enough is totally close enough. Um, and you can see that this is a fairly low resolution file. Uh, we're going to have to do some interpretation here. It's not going to be super easy. It's not going to necessarily be the prettiest thing when we're done, but it will get us what we need. Um, our goal here is to create a paintable, paintable line art. I should, probably should have mentioned that earlier. One where you can just take it. Oh, no, don't want to use that. One where you can just take it, open it up. Whoops. Ah and drop paint into it um, so that you can do really rapid custom color schemes uh, to prototype uh, any builds that you've got in mind. Um, so yeah, this is going to be what we're going for uh, by the end of this project. So um, I'm not going to take you through an entire vectoring session. That's, uh, that's quite a while, but let's do the basics. So um, this, this is going to be your primary tool, tool here. That's uh, the Beezer curves and straight lines. Uh, the keyboard shortcut in Inkscape for that is Shift F6. It's a real pain in the ass, and I'm considering editing some configuration files to redo that. Whatever. So essentially, this is going to draw a point to point line. Point, 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 point. Clicking every time. Hit Enter to commit to that series of lines. Um, going to undo there. Alternatively, you can draw a curve. As you uh, lay down your point, you hold it, and you can drag this around. Um, this point, you can see opposite my mouse cursor, is where it's going to want to pull the line towards. So the farther it is, the farther that line is going to want to bend. If I put it closer to this end of the line, it's going to shift it that way. You can see it kind of moving like a wave. Um, there are more complicated ways of doing this. I don't really have a handle on them. 
So if you were to let go of this, that turns green, that commits you to that. And then if I were to just move the mouse here, you see it's going to want to create a mirror curve there. Um, I very rarely find that useful because it's not something that I have a lot of control over. So if I hit enter, commit to that segment of the curve, grab that point, click it, and now I've got a nice straight line again. Or I can pull that curve. Now, this is kind of out of context, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So let's actually get hands on our line art. I'm just going to start with an arbitrary point. For some reason, I always start on the left arms of any mobile suit. Um, and just kind of, all right, that's the corner of the shoulder. That's another corner of the shoulder. And eh, that might be curved. I'm not sure. For now, I'm going to do that and do that. That's a nice segment there. Commit it. Cool. Oh, wait a second. This needs to be a little bit higher up. But if I grab this, it's just going to want to make a line. That's not what I want. So I'll hit backspace and undo that. Um, so what, what do we do? Well, the thing with vectors is that you can freely transform objects that you've created. And uh, if they're in the same group, they'll move together. So that's this tool right here. Keyboard shortcut is going to be F2. Um, also, all the keyboard shortcuts show up in their tooltips. So just hover if you forget. Um, so cool, we've, we've got, got that kind of change, we've got that kind of, eh, it's still a little low, let's pull that up again, so maybe that shoulder is a little bit more like this, I'm going to hit F6, go back to our, I'm sorry, I'm going to hit Shift F6, go back to our uh, Beezer Curve tool, and I can grab either end of the segment now that I have it selected, so I can grab that, kind of do that, let's go down in here, okay, easy enough, but I've, it seems like in here somewhere, not, not, not what I was going for. It seems like in here somewhere there, there probably should be another, you know, um, chamfer to match this shoulder. So what can we do about that? Well, we're going to select the curve, kind of click on that line of segment, and you can, you can see what you have selected by these turning yellow. Um, might not show up too well in the video. You'll be able to see it on your own monitor at home. And we got all these buttons up here. Um, honestly, I don't know what about half of them do, but that's good enough. We can add a node. Those points along the line are called nodes. We can add one right to the middle of that segment. Okay, well, let's grab it and, oh, nope, that's not what we wanted to do. Control Z, undo that. Let's select just that node and just kind of move it here. Pull that there. Oh, look, that's a nice little, that's a nice little happy little shoulder. From there, we can go back to our line tool and start working out the shoulder a little more. Making some lines. And it's going to be a really complicated shape there. But it's something that you kind of get the feel of. You kind of start to get the perspective. And um, being able to tweak it really does, uh, at least for me, it gives me a lot more confidence in terms of uh, my margin for error. Oops. See, I accidentally laid down a point here that I don't want to make. So I can hit backspace, 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 backspace to undo one segment at a time without having to hit escape. Oh, and there goes my entire line, and now it's gone. So that's a super useful little bit of info. So let's say I've, um, you know, let's say I've been working on this for a while. I've worked my way down to the segment of the arm, and I'm just going to lay down a point here and lay down a point here. And, oh, crap, you know what? I've already committed it accidentally. I don't want to have to redraw it, but it needs to be curved. Well, all right, F2, select that line of segment. And these buttons here can make, uh, make a segment a line or make a segment a curve. So I've decided to make it a curve, and I'm just going to kind of massage that into place. Typically, I don't like working with two of these handles, but, you know, whatever works. And there, now it's a curve. Now I can go back to my line tool and just start laying down points again. Um, stuff like this, oof, you know, I, I'm not sure if it goes out to here. I'm not sure if it just should drop down like this. Ultimately, this sort of fine detail isn't going to matter a huge amount, but personally, if, if I'm not sure about something, I like to go to what we're actually going to be working in, and that's look at the plastic itself. Uh, high grade, no bell. I used Delong. I really like his photo reviews because um, he's super. You know, he does a lot of documentation. And oh look, it's no bell. Uh, what, what does that elbow look like? Let's take a look. All right, it's, it's, it seems to be fairly flat, so we can probably ignore this here and just drop this on down and continue along our way. Now it's going to be curved. We can kind of just 
just grab that and clicking and holding and just kind of massage that into the point where it needs to be. Um, kind of hard to see against these big chunky pixels, but if you ever want to check your progress, hit F1, select just some white space where you know your line art image is, delete it. Oh look, there's a shoulder and an elbow. Control Z, undo, cool. So not every curve, unfortunately, behaves. Not every curve is really easy to, to deal with. So if I were to select this and this, and I need to scroll down a little bit and zoom out, you can do all that while you're holding the mouse button. That's, that's actually a fairly good representation, but honestly it seems more to me like this is kind of a curve and this is kind of a curve. So I would select kind of like that, make that curve, hit enter to commit it, grab that node right there, and make another curve. And I know that this resolution is kind of hard to see, but there I think I, I have a little bit better of a representation of that. Um, that's not the best situation for that. Ah, here's a good situation actually. See, I would make a curve like this, and oh, this is going to be impossible to see, but once I commit it, you should be able to see it. I'm going to make a curve like that, and then I'll make a curve like that. And that kind of maintains the angular nature of it, but still accurately represents the flow of that line. So let's say you've done a whole bunch of work, and you've got a you, you've got a completed line art, and you've done an entire mobile suit. Holy shit, you actually did it. That's awesome. Um, this, we can't work with this yet. Um, not, you know, vector graphics are kind of, to me, not what we're going for when we're uh, actually doing paint jobs on these. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to export a bitmap of that. Personally, working in the standard Inkscape uh, page size here, I like to export it about 200. Um, that gives you a uh, nice big line art with about two pixel wide lines, it seems. Uh, at least in my experience, I'm still kind of figuring all this out. And I, but I would go ahead and I would export that bitmap and I'm gonna export it as H2 raw. Cause I've already done the H2, but you know, might as well start from scratch. Now, um, there are a few parts on the H2 that uh, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to bring in the line to show here, but thick black lines on a lot of uh, Epic House stuff. And what I like to do is I like to bound that in two lines, fill it in with black later. We'll get there. So we're done in Escape for now. Um, that, those are all the super basics. You can, you know, adding, removing nodes, all that stuff, um, transforming objects that you've created. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot more little advanced tricks, but this is you know, super basics, super top level. So let's get out of Inkscape here, and let's also get out of Inkscape here, and go over to paint.net. That's my paint program of choice. And I'm gonna open up that file that we just exported. Oops, wrong folder. Vectors, age two, where's that raw, where's that raw file? No, seriously, where is it? Did I export that to the wrong folder? Crap. Oh well. Um, what the hell? Actually, no, not what the hell. Where is that? File. Export bitmap. H2. Oh, I must have exported this. I don't know. Whatever. We'll work in the. Uh, we'll work in my master grade X line art. Because something got screwy. Is that? That's what I'm looking for. Sorry, I didn't plan too much. So when you uh, when you export that file, you get something like this. This is a trace I did of the uh, Master Grade X, and um, you'll see that this. If I wanted to paint it, and let's just uh, let's just go and create a background here. Drop that layer down. Um, boom. There. Um, you'll see that if I wanted to paint this. Let's say I want to do these cuffs. Oops, hold on. Not good. I'm going to want to select that layer. Uh, I get all these crappy lines, and, you know, crappy pixels here where it doesn't really match up. Um, by the way, if you're working in something like this, just keep your tolerance around for painting around 15%. But um, this isn't what we're looking for. You know, I'd just paint bucket in the original line art if I wanted something that looked like crap. 
that's not what we're going for. So step one, step one when you're doing something like this is going to be get your pure black and white going here. And this is not a paint.net tutorial. Um, I can do one if you want, but I'm kind of assuming you know the basics. Um, but here's some paint.net stuff. We need this to be pure black and white. Um, adjusting the contrast here is not going to work. I've tried it. So just kind of arbitrarily decide, and actually it works a little better if it's transparent for now, arbitrarily decide what is halfway dark and what is halfway light. And you're going to want to shift and left click, right click here. You're going to shift, right click that. Shift, right click that. And shift, right click says anything that is this color, just go ahead and fill that in. Um, and for this, I'm going to bump my tolerance up a little bit. Tolerance denotes um, how, how loose it's going to be by, with, with following that color. I'm going to start shift clicking on that, or shift left click. And we're really close to actually just having pure black and white here. I'm going to shift right click on the white, uh, on the blank space denoted by this checker pattern. That's going to fill in everything that's blank space. And I think that we've got kind of everything. Uh, it usually takes a little bit longer. But I've kind of got the process down. So you'll see this is this is an unfinished line art. Um, there's plenty of little marks on it that uh, where are, that are places where I need to finish stuff. But it'll be perfectly good enough for our purposes. So you could just start dropping paint into this. I could say, oh, that's a nice little X blue. Hit F for my fill tool and start filling in that blue. And yeah, that's going real well. Oh, that should be red. Oh, well, screw it. Oh, damn it. This bled into here. What? what? That's, That's not, not what, what I wanted. wanted. No. Well, I, I guess, guess I'll just have to get a pencil, pencil tool and start filling in these gaps. All right. Well, let's, let's say I want to. Let's say I want to put it on a green background, and you know, it's because I'm a crazy person. person. But it's bleeding into the legs. And what the hell? It's bleeding into this. That's no good. Grab your pencil. Grab some straight up black. Start filling these in. Awesome. This is a tedious and not very rewarding process, but it is a very necessary part of this. So, you know, um, you go through and you start closing up all those gaps, but then, you know, I don't want to have to, like, let's say I want these, you know, these gun barrels or these gun pods to be red. I don't want to have to fill in every single one every single time I want to do a freaking recolor. So why don't I just grab Undo all that. Grab my white and start opening up some uh, opening up some holes so the paint can, for lack of a better term, just flow through. So that when I want to fill these in with this nice burgundy here, oh look, it's gonna flow through all the way to this. Probably just grab that pencil. Now you get all these little you know, individual pixels, pixels that get isolated. Uh, I just fill those in with black or, you know, with black or white or just, you know, do whatever to make it so that they just go away. Um, so, you know, the process uh, that you want to go through for something like this is, well, I know I'm not going to, uh, I know I'm going to want this to be a different color than this. I'm going to zoom in on it. Straight up black and white. Start penciling it in. Make sure that the paint can't flow through there. Um, I've gotten to the point in my line in, in doing my line art where I kind of leave all the gaps for, that I want paint to flow through. Like I want paint to go into this heel, so I kind of intentionally left this gap. Um, that's kind of uh, you know after you do a few line arts, that'll become fairly natural. You'll start you know essentially um, making it easier on yourself to do stuff. You know places where you would definitely want paint to flow through would be something like this, where oh well that should pretty much all be the same color, but it's not, not, so I'm just going to open that up, open that up, usually around the edges so that you, know, you still have the definition of that shape there, but without the, uh, without all the hassle. So that's some super basic stuff, and, you know, eventually that, this process will get you to something like, let me see here, I'm going to grab some H2 stuff because I think it turned out really well. Um, We'll get you something. Oops, wrong one. It'll, It'll get you something like this. Uh, this is what I refer to as an empty line art. All the black spaces are filled in with black. 
Um, all the frame color uh, I, I tend to do because you know, a lot of people aren't going to mess around with the frame too much. Um, and this gives you an empty line art. I like to leave the optics, gives it a bit of color, whatever, personal choice. Um, and from here, I can, uh, and you see I've got a color palette here that, uh, that I tend to use. I can start, you know, grabbing colors. I, I either grab them from here or I grab them from a photo or from, from original line art and just start filling these in. And you can see where that just nicely flows through. That fills in the whole thing because I've left the gap here. And uh, all this stuff just kind of starts to come together. Um, Control Z is your friend. And you start, you know, getting this process down and creating some nice custom line art. Which ends up with this. Okay, this is something that you know I published as a final product, and this is a normal color scheme for this mobile suit. But if somebody wanted to go crazy and make it like a, I don't know, a state art version of this, well, they can go in and fill in every instance of this blue and just nice and tedious, or they can just shift left click on any blue on the page and oh look, easy custom. Let's reverse the colors on this guy. Shift right click. Right -click. Oops, I'll do that. There we go. That's ugly as sin. Oh well. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't remember if there's anything I've missed here, but uh, that's kind of the super basics of how you want to go about this. A lot of it is feeling it out, a lot of it is you know, getting things to, uh, getting comfortable enough with the process of using these programs. Um, to the point where you, know, you can actually just go ahead and jump in and uh, whip something up. So uh, I guess that's it. I'm going to flip over to the Twitch chat that I have going here that I think I may have closed. Maybe. Nope. And uh, let's see if... Nope, no one's asking questions. Pretty much no one's watching. So uh, I guess that's it. Um, if you guys in the chat have any questions, if you two guys in the chat have any questions, let me know. Um, and uh, I can do an addendum to this, or I can do another video. This is just kind of a super quick test to see uh, how this sort of thing goes. So have fun drawing line art. Uh, I really hope that we can bring back the old tradition of producing these. Um, you know, I definitely grew up finding these line arts uh, all over the place. And you know, this guy's style uh, was super fantastic back in the day. I can't replicate it. I don't know how the heck he did this. Uh, it has a super gritty look that I've always really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I grew up on these line arts, and I haven't seen them produced in at least a few years. So um, if I had my brothers, uh, we'd be knee-deep in these things. Oh, wow, yeah, I forgot, I forgot that he'd done some age ones, or whoever was doing them did some age ones. Uh, but there's just not enough of these for uh, mobile suits that people really want to work on, especially now that the high-grade line is really kicking into gear with the All Gundam Project. Uh, I really think there's a lot of work that can be done in this space to facilitate uh, model builders and, uh, and fans so that we don't have to do really horrible, ugly things like this, where you, you know, do color selects and HSV shifts on photos and just they end up looking like ass and a half so uh, and, and so we don't have to deal with stuff like this where you're dealing with super low res line art trying to imagine what it really would look like and not really getting a good picture of it so I guess that's it um, I hope that this has been useful to at least one person uh, I will be posting this soon and I really hope to uh, hear what you guys have to say. I would be happy to cut another video that is less off the cuff if, uh, if this would get some good response. So uh, anyway, happy building. Thank you for uh, 